Rasa is not so common name, so the name Charlemagne is more common in the history book. So Athens was his capital, he was the Roman Empire. And Napoleon, a French Empire, believed that okay, he was a reincarnation of Charlemagne. Then the famous German poet and dramatist Goethe, he also believed in reincarnation. That's spread throughout his literature. Then Emerson, Thoreau is a famous philosopher, Whitman. Dickens, all of you must have read many of his novels, Tolstoy, James Joyce, and Hermann Hesse is a German poet and novelist. Uh, he, I think, is a Nobel laureate also. Richard Park, have you read his book, uh, Jonathan Livingston Siva? Yeah. yeah. So, he's the author. Okay, so now I told that I'll come back to some, some facts. So, Dr. Wilfred Bigelow is the former head of the cardiovascular surgery unit at Toronto General Hospital. He became all famous for his pioneering work in deep freeze surgical technique, known as hypothermia, and for his heart valve surgery. So, he's actually he's one of the co inventor of pacemaker. So, he said that soul research should be undertaken by theology and allied disciplines within the university. Actually, in his profession, he encountered many incidents where, say, the heart had stopped, the patient had clinically died, but again, the same patient was revived later. And he attributed that that's due to the existence of soul. Then I referred to a research monograph by Dr. Ian Stevenson. He's the former head of the Department of Psychiatry at the University of Virginia, and the book is from the University of Press of Virginia, 20 cases suggestive of reincarnation. So he did a research span over, I think, around 30 years, and he gave it uh, a long time just to study the effect. And also, he considered many countries around the world, and not to be biased statistically, uh, some of the countries where reincarnation is not a belief. Because one of his hypotheses was, before he started the experiment, that maybe reincarnation incidents are reported only in those countries where people believe in the philosophy of reincarnation from the beginning. So, so whatever happens, if anything is incidental, they would attribute it, oh, okay, this is reincarnation. So he made sure that, okay, I take some samples from some you know, land, from some country, where people have not heard about soul. They don't think about soul, and they don't think about reincarnation. And from those tribes, uh, also, he found some evidence that, yes, I mean, they are not faking. I mean, it could not be said unless they remember something in the past. Of course, I mean, you can go ahead and challenge and redo the experiment and give some data, but well, it has to be reviewed by the community. <coughs> Another example, Dr. Brian Weiss is the Chairman Emeritus of Psychiatry at the Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami. It's more recent, many lives, many masters. Also, you know, the experience, uh, experience of this doctor with uh, the patients. Okay, so I am more or less uh, towards the end of uh, the lecture. One natural question that you may ask that why does not then everybody remember their past life? Why the, the, the cases of reincarnation are so rare? I mean, for example, Dr. Stevenson did research over 30 years and he found 20 cases. Actually, I mean, in the preface of the book, he writes he found many cases, like maybe you know, a few hundreds. But actually, he deleted those cases or you know, did not consider those cases which he found to be fake or which he found to be just a coincidence. So he recorded only those 20 that his findings revealed to be genuine. <clears throat> okay, so coming back to the point, uh, why does not everybody remember? So the doctors uh, who actually believe uh, in reincarnation, some of them uh, say that it's the trauma of death Technically, it's called terminal restlessness, so during death. So, many uh, changes happen in your body, and the trauma is so much that it causes a loss of memory. And in fact, uh, you can associate it to, the, it to some other examples in real life, because even in present life, there are post traumatic amnesia, right? So, something traumatic happens, some accident or something, people forget. Uh, the accident may not be physical, some mental shock also causes people to you know, forget some things. 
So if post-traumatic amnesia can happen in one's own life while living, so why could not the, the loss of memory of the soul when one body is dying before the soul uh, takes another body, why could not that be attributed to the trauma of death, the terminal disease? So that's, that's one of the arguments. Yeah. <laughs> For example, you said post-traumatic amnesia. When it happens, something happens to the brain. Your uh, neurons have been affected. Yes. But when you die, your body is, is perished, and uh, then, then I mean, there, there is no logic as to how that all that data is traveled. So, 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 you you are talking about uh, memory as a device. I am mean, talking about yeah. I mean, uh, it's, yeah. It makes so, no so sense. if you take the view of information theorist, then <laughs> then you can. You can think of it in terms of information, in terms of knowledge, right? So when when you store in terms of bits in the memory, so you destroy the memory, then those bits are destroyed. Mm. Uh, I've seen a lot of people who believe that actually uh, not remembering is um, intelligent decision. Yeah, yeah. Not to not to remember because you can remember something that's not good for you. You can remember like your dad is was your worst enemy or was the one who killed you or something like that. So it's like uh, it's a defense mechanism. Yes, I mean I also heard about that. Like for example, if if there is only one life or two life, then the the, the memory cannot cause harm. But if there are many many lives, if the soul is going through. A cycle of many many lives, then it's dangerous to remember so many different things, so many flashbacks, and then you can't do anything, you can't function normally in life because all the incidents from thousands and thousands of years back will haunt you at every moment. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily according to the human philosophy. <laughs> not necessarily, but not sufficiently either, right? Uh, do you, does reincarnation happen only positive in time or it can happen like. Uh, yeah. <laughs> talking about time reversal in general relativity. No, if I die, will I be? I mean, if if reincarnation is true, if I die, will I be born in the future, or I can be born anywhere in the time stream, or in the future, because the past had already happened. No, but news, everything. I mean, the new uh, ideas saying that uh, everything is happening simultaneously. So I'm yes. born right now, and I die. But even if everything is happening simultaneously, you will be born to the future of another world. Right? Which may look like the past of this world, but it's the future of that world. Okay. So in, in no world you will go back to the past of that particular world. No, no, no. What I'm talking is... Uh, you are talking about parallel universe. No, no I'm not talking about yeah. parallel universe. I'm just saying that uh, all the time is happening simultaneously. So if I die, I'm born again. I may not be chronologically um, taking birth in 2000 something, but yeah, I can go back and... Be born again. No, uh, happening simultaneously. I did not get you. You were saying that uh, everything okay, that uh, happened is again happening simultaneously. Okay. Uh, uh, if if you have time, I, I would like to. There's a story by Andy Weiss. Uh -huh. uh, the story is called The Egg. Uh -huh. So there is a guy who dies and he wakes up uh -huh. and he meets another person who says that uh, I'm sorry, you are dead. So he talks about that. What about my wife and my kids? They said they are they are sorry, but uh, yeah, that's the that's the thing. That's the that's life. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to give you birth again as a Chinese uh, rice worker in the 1500s. Mm -hmm. So he says that, uh, how is it possible? So he says everybody is born again at the same time. Then after some discussion he realizes that everybody is the same person who is born again at different times. Mm -hmm. And in the end, uh, when humanity evolves, somehow when they get intelligent enough not to meddle in petty business, mm -hmm. they evolve to something of something godlike and something like that. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, that the idea was that uh, everything is happening simultaneously and uh, yeah, then yeah, so that, that you were referring to a story but uh, what I can tell you scientifically is that there are uh, two, um, two prominent models of uh, the phenomenon of time in the universe. Right? One is the parallel universe model which was uh, um, proposed by two physicists uh, John Everett and Wheeler in uh, 1950s and uh, which and people are still doing research on it. So that's like uh, at every moment there is a quantum mechanical splitting of the universe into multiverses. Yes. So 
uh, then when you go back to future or past, you actually go back to the future or past, I mean, of another universe, which has nothing to do with this universe. That's one prevalent theory. And the another theory, which does not uh, take into account multiple universe, okay, that actually believes that even if you go back to the past, then you're already at the you're then you cannot the change. Then you cannot change the past. So it's called, uh, I think Stephen Hawking called it the chronology protection conjecture or the history preservation conjecture that whatever has happened, you cannot change it. You will simply act in a way to help to happen those things that exactly happen. And uh, one example of uh, this chronology protection conjecture is uh, the movie, I think, uh, the 12 Monkeys or something? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, there are many ones, but but I'm talking about just scientifically. Forget about the movies and, and the stories. So was that thing right? You go back and kill your grandfather. Oh, that that was uh, time machine one, two, and three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the time machine. Yeah. Okay. I watched it all three in one day. <laughs> okay. And then, yes, some other people say that there are some memory erasing hormones in the womb. So, uh, even if, uh, I mean, if, if nothing happens during death, so when you take new birth, then also it will tend to form. According, uh, according to some theory, uh, yeah. it is believed that many people do remember yes their past life, but uh, means when the child is born, means when the child is uh, very small enough, yeah. uh, he cries. Or he laughs without any reason. Means he doesn't always cry when he is hungry. Yeah. He might cry for some other reasons also. Yes. So what people say is that uh, he's he has some memories of his past and that makes those expressions come out of his yeah, yeah. So that's that's common belief. But actually, in the slide, I wanted to put only those things that are medically and chemically claimed by the so-called scientists. Okay. Okay, wait a second. So these two things. Are very related to humans, but you have to set trees. Because they did experiment in some sort of humans, right? Yeah, okay. But yeah. So if you say the trees have souls, and yeah. the soul is like an energy. Yes, yes. So, so if you were a tree, you would have yeah. remembrance of the tree life yeah. also. Exactly. So yes. Maybe I'm not remembering because I was a tree before. <laughs> but, uh, so do you mean to say if you have had a thousand of lives, in each of those lives you are a tree? Maybe you are a tiger, right? Yeah, I still will remember. I but mean, you don't, so so what happens? That's that's yeah, amazing. Then it's missing something here in the slide. So someone has to be experimenting no, with but other who, species. Who told you that trees don't remember? They mean Yeah, well if I was a tree why don't I remember that I was cut off or something? <laughs> 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 you were also would have been cut off by killing someone and being yeah, hanged by that. That means that the soul doesn't so the perception of so it's not the same for every form of life. Of course not, because you perceive through your body. So there's no guarantee that you are the same form of life. So that no, 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 no. So, so yes, yes. So, so the okay. So the theory of soul does not assume that a human is always human, or an animal is always <laughs> animal, or the tree is always animal. So, so both intraspecies and interspecies movement are possible yeah, from the journey of the soul. This proves the point number two. Well, this slide relates only to humans. Okay. <laughs> so it's a particular case. Particular case. Yeah. Right. Oh, so it's A to B, B to A, A to A, B to B. It's only A to B. No, this is the reason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you believe that uh, the, the amount of soul, let's let's call it amount of soul, humans possess is the same what a cockroach would possess, or the same what an amoeba would possess? No, no, no. It's, uh, so it's a, like the law of conservation of energy, right? Yeah. So do you say that the energy that human consumes, the energy that cockroach consumes, they are individually conserved? No, right? Not even in the heart of the energy is conserved in the whole universe. So similarly... So I can be 15 cockroaches in my past life and now I am born as a single human. Can that be possible? No, no, no. no. Not 15 cockroaches. Maybe you are one cockroach. But what I am saying is that there may be lives in other universes you don't know. So even if the population is growing or shrinking in one particular planet does not I mean, violate the, the conservation of soul conjecture. Okay. So you cannot quantify soul in that sense. In that sense. In the same sense, 
in which you cannot quantify the total energy of the, the universe. Okay, uh, one more thing. Uh, <laughs> for example, in Buddhism, it, yes. it's, a, it's, a, it's a set belief that you always get reincarnated, but the only way to get out of this world is to break the cycle Yes, and to uh, dissolve yourself in some form of God or some, something like that. Yes. Yes. So, uh, so yeah. So, uh, I mean, what is that? You're not saying that uh, human soul is not equal to a soul of an amoeba or a soul of a hydra. And you cut a hydra, you cut a tree, you cut a rose plant, and you plant it again. You get another tree out there. So, is it like soul divides into two and then it grows again? And it's it's uh, it's. Uh, no, it's, it need not be the same soul. So whenever, okay, so from the tree you get many fruits, from the fruit you get many seed. Yeah. And uh, the seed when you plant, you get a tree. So it's not the soul is being divided. Yeah. Right? When you talk, it's, when it's, you say the soul is coming from another body. Yeah, so many uh, living entities are dying. Yeah. When you say of this, you say that uh, that seed is another soul. For example, in a rose plant, mm -hmm. you cut the stem out. Right. It was part of the same tree. Yes. You cut the stem out. Now you have two stems. Mm -hmm. You bury them, you get two rose plants. Right. So, there what is happening? So, you are assuming the same soul is being divided. So, that's your model. Yeah. yeah. For example, but in a hydra also, if you cut yeah, yeah. part of a I perfectly agree. So, you don't have to uh, think about the hydra, right? You can think about millions of trees coming from the same tree. Because of the fruits, one fruit may have many seeds. Mm -hmm. So, that's a better example than one branch with uh, you know, just two, and two different example, trees. Uh, each of our cell is individual and uh, it has some programming of its own that it has to do this mm -hmm. in its 28 day lifetime or something like that or whatever. Mm -hmm. So would you consider that there is a soul in that cell also? You, I mean I entered we were talking about something about a cell. Yes, cell. yes. So I would say that it's the same soul in the whole body and all the cells are getting their life energy from the same soul. But when you are talking about the one life generating from, or many lives generating from one life, for example, say tree, plantation or something, uh, then I would say that those souls are not generated from this soul. Those souls are coming from some other bodies which are dying. That may be plants, that may be human, that may be something else. So there is a particular time when the soul enters that particular seed. So, soul After it's being planted. So, soul is continuous and not quantized. Let me know what is it. It's a continuous... In terms of the total number, but in terms of the existence, it is quantized. So, your soul is different from my soul. From the, uh, and it's different from the soul of a tree. Okay. okay. So, it's distinct, uh, also, but not countable. Also, uh, another book I've read that... Uh, uh, same soul can be born to two different people. Can this, this, do you believe in that uh, theory or uh, no? You don't. Like if if I die, I'll be born into two different persons, both having the same soul, not knowing. It's not possible. Okay. I mean, why? That like this is a pretty radical idea. Mm -hmm. When you can believe this, why can't you go a step further and believe that too? Well, then uh, you will have some contradiction. So there will be proof by contradiction. Right? No, this so this ideas also have some contradictions, like. Uh, for example, as, as uh, uh, my colleague said about the tree getting born into mm -hmm. a human, yeah, I mean, if I have a past life and I, if I have a memory, it would be very boring living a life as a tree. And mm -hmm. just, uh, I mean, they don't even have a nervous system, so yeah. we don't even know if they have memories or not. Yes. So, yeah, so that, that is pretty contradictory and, uh, yeah, of course, and uh, what is the entity of a soul? Is it an energy or some stream bits or whatever? Okay, so, so if you are interested, I invite you to the next lecture which I am planning to give as a continuation of this series, okay. talking about the feature of the soul, okay? Okay, the property, the physical, chemical property of the soul and stuff like that. You can discuss about that. Uh, sir, I want to ask, is yeah. the total number of souls in the universe, uh, whatever, all that, is it constant? Uh, yes. Law of conservation of souls. Law of conservation of souls. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, uh, so you, need to, uh, you want to say that if the human population is increasing and the tiger population is decreasing or some other population or some yeah. other species population is decreasing to yeah. compensate yeah. that? Yes. So, so not, and not only in the earth, over the universe. Uh, so, what's the number? <laughs> can, can be complete. <laughs> one minute. So, so do you believe that Earth is one planet and uh, and say Mars is another planet, or do you believe they are uh, the same planet? Why would they be the same planet? Right. So you count Earth as one and Mars as two. But do you know the total number of planets in the universe? You don't know. 
So yeah, you are designing something like, like that. Mm -hmm. How much would you pay for uh, washing all the windows in New York? Mm -hmm. yeah? So how much would you pay? Yeah, so even so my point is even if you cannot count, you can still claim something yeah, to be individual. Say, okay, five dollars per square meter, right? Yeah. So if you don't know the, the course you know, you can say okay, the soul density and so yeah, so density, yes, so the density is also a function of space and time. So the soul density, for example, in India is much more because it has lots of But soul density in Germany is less. Yes. Yeah, Okay, so uh, there are many species in the air which might be here in Germany. Yeah, so true. to increase the soul density. And what about the constant uh, reduction of souls mm -hmm. due to religions like Buddhism who, who really don't want to get reborn and they want to get, it out, get out of the system? So they are constantly reducing the number of souls that are there in the system and... Yeah, that is interesting. I mean, can you come to the next lecture yeah, so yeah, that we can have more discussion? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. Some, some other ingredients also. Or we can continue it after the talk, because yeah, some yeah, other yeah, people yeah. may want to leave. Yeah, okay. They are running out of time. Yes. <laughs> after all? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, um, do you believe that there is a time gap the moment you die till you are reborn? Yes, it may be. There is a time gap. At least it's not negative. <laughs> it's greater than equal to zero. Yeah, I mean, it, it, can, it can be zero, so, it can be more. Um, and you say that the cells in the body, they need the soul to live, right? Not to live. To, li I mean, uh, to live, yeah, to not live. to preserve. So Preservation one, and living is different. So, yeah, so once I remove the soul from the body, the body is actually dead instantly. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, you remove the soul from the body? Yes. yes. So if I can, could do that, right? I, the body is dead and yes. the soul is removed. Yes. So how do you explain then that, for instance, after death, right, the hair still grows up to the ratio of three weeks or so, nail grow, uh, the skin is replacing itself, mm -hmm. although you are dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's nothing alive. How do you explain that still cells are working in the body, although the soul is not there anymore? But can they work longer? So, no, I mean, it is three weeks is quite a duration, right? Yeah, so, so that's, that's the chemical process. But what I'm saying that to sustain the chemical process, you need the soul. But without the soul, it cannot be sustained longer. It's like you know, so it's like a decreasing curve. <laughs> With soul, it's either constant, something like that. You can think about it. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> okay, so then, uh, this is my last slide, which... Uh, it's, you can think of it as an advertisement of the next lecture. <laughs> so, now that we talked about the four levels of existence, the senses, uh, or the body, the mind, intelligence and soul, so the next question is how to do, uh, how to manage them in the context of human beings. Because, I mean, now as a human being I am talking to some human beings. So, in the context of that. So there is an analogy in an Eastern uh, philosophical text, uh, Kaha Upanishad, chapter 3, verse 12, 3.12. It says, the analogy is like this. So again, it's an analogy, right? So, that the senses are like the horses. So the five senses are like five horses. The rope that is tied to the horse is like the mind, which is controlling the horses. And then there is a chariot.